In this video, I'm going to provide an introduction to discrete probability distributions. And these are distributions which can be used to describe things which can only take on discrete values. So, for example, if you're modeling, let's say, the count of some particular type of event, or let's say you're modeling one individual event in itself. So, for example, the outcome of a horse race. So, in this case, you might be modeling just the success or failure of one particular event. So what do we actually mean by a discrete probability distribution? Well, this is some sort of mathematical function where the values of that function correspond in the case of discrete distributions to probabilities. And note that this is different to the case of continuous random variables where we cannot associate a probability with a particular value, it turns out that what we associate is what's known as a probability density. So what's the definition of this sort of mathematical function in order for it to be defined as a discrete probability distribution? Well, the idea here is that the probability that some random variable A equals a particular value, let's call that little a, must be greater than or equal to zero. So note here, a big A is what is known as a random variable. And a random variable is actually quite a simple thing. It's got quite a complicated name, but it's actually simple in nature. And all it is, is it's a letter typically that associates a particular numeric value with some outcome of the real world. So in the example here, we're gonna use big A to represent the number of apples that we have in some bag before we actually view that bag and count the number of apples in it. Little a here is just a particular value of that random variable. So in the case of apples in a bag, let's imagine that the bag has a capacity of three. The possible values are just zero, one, two, and three. So firstly, we require that the probability values are always greater than or equal to zero. And secondly, we require that the sum of all of the possible values of this probability distribution, so summing in this case of the apples from a is equal to zero to a is equal to three, that must be equal to one. So what does this second condition say? Well, it just says that one of the possible events must occur. So in the case of apples in the bag, it's either zero, one, two, or three, and no other outcomes are possible. So the definition of a discrete probability distribution just requires these two points to be satisfied, these two conditions to be satisfied. So what might a discrete probability distribution look like for our apples example here? Well, on the Bottom axis here, we might have the number of apples that we have in our bag. Let's call that big A here. And we're supposing that the bag has a maximum capacity of three. So the possible values, as we said before, are zero, one, two, and three. And then the Y axis here is just what's known as a probability. So what might a potential probability distribution actually look like? Well, let's suppose that we imagine that all outcomes are equally likely. So that is the, the probability we have zero, one, two, or three apples in our bag are all the same. And in order for them to satisfy the second condition, what we must require is that the sum of all these individual probability values is one, which if they're all equal means that the probability of any individual outcome is just a quarter. That's one possible distribution. Another one might be, let's say, if we imagine that in the bag there are always greater than one apple. So that is the probability of there being zero or one apples are both zero. And then the probability of there being two or three are, let's say, equal. In this case, in order to satisfy the second condition, we require that the probability of two or three apples are both equal and equal to a half. Well, actually, we don't need them to be equal. I'm just assuming that they're equal here. OK, given that we have this probability distribution, how can we use it? Why is this a useful thing for describing some real world outcomes? Well, consider here the second example. Let's imagine that we want to calculate the probability that the number of apples 
in our bag is less than 3. Well, how can we get that in this case? Well, it's fairly simple. All we do is we add together the probability of there being 0, 1, or 2 apples. And in that case, we see that seeing as the first two are just 0, and then the probability of the number of apples being equal to 2 is a half, that the probability that the number of apples in our bag being less than 3 is just equal to a half in this case. So in summary, we see that discrete distributions are mathematical functions that associate potential outcomes with probabilities. And those potential outcomes could be, let's say, a count of something, or they can also be things like measuring a one-off event, like does it occur or does the event not occur. For a given distribution to be defined as a discrete probability distribution, it has to satisfy two conditions. The first is that the probability of any particular value must be greater than or equal to zero, and also the sum over all potential probabilities must be equal to one. And then we've seen that after we've defined a probability distribution, we can then use that to calculate the probabilities of sets of events.